We will start with a roll call. President Abbas. Present. Vice President Martin is running late. Alder Carter. Try again, I believe you're muted. Present. Alder Bennett is running late. Uh, Alder Harrington McKinney. Present. Alder Hack. Here. Alder Lemmer is excused. And Alder Wahelia. Present. All right, we have quorum. Perfect. And I also want to acknowledge Vice President Martin is also here. You're, you're present. Perfect. With that, we will move forward with the approval of the minute. Can I please have a motion? Move approval of the minutes. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Any comments on the minutes? I don't see any hand raised, so I will consider as unanimous approval. I will move forward to the public comment. Uh, Matlin, do we have a public comment at this time? Uh, no one is registered for item number one public comment, but we do have one registrant for item number six, uh, six. who would like to speak. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, disclosure and recusal. Any member wish to dis disclose or accuse? I do not see any hand raise. With that, we will go to agenda item number two, legislative file number 67082, alternative amending section 33.01, seven of medicine general ordinance to permit subunit to remove officer and to schedule agenda item. Can I have a motion please? Move uh, uh, recommendation to approve. This motion is moved. Can I have a second, please? Second. Perfect. It's moved and seconded. Any question for the staff? Or comments? I will just raise my hand and I'm going to pr propose a small amendment and I'm also going to send that amendment to all the all, uh, CCEC orders. Methlin, I'm going to send it to you if you can forward to all CCEC members, also order Foster, that would be really good. And I'm going to speak to my amendment. I like to move an amendment in which basically I'm trying to say and uh, CCEC sorry, not CCEC the order should not be uh, should not be sit on both chair or co-chair position, they can only sit in a one, chair, one position, either chair or either vice chair. And the second thing that amendment also talk about, uh, uh, if in absence of community uh, appointed people on a committee, if in their absence of leadership, if they wish not to be uh, chair or co-chair, then order should be allowed. So there are two things in this amendment and I just sent to Matt Lynn. and. Can I have second to that amendment so we can then debate? Second. It's moved and seconded. Alder McKinney, please go ahead. All right, thank you. I almost missed this one. Um, uh, I am not supportive of allowing an alder. Is that the one that we're on? I want to make sure yes. I, okay. Uh, I'm not in support of having an alder to serve on any board committee or commission. And my reason being, it, um, initially uh, I had one reason um, for, for offering the original motion is because the um, there was only one, one board committee commission that had an older to serve as chair, regardless, regardless of the reasoning, uh, in terms of uh, being equitable and consistent, I had a problem with that. Um, but as I even think deeper, my reasoning is, is that we have been encouraging um, um, public um, participation, uh, and that's been our focus, like how do we encourage public participation? How do we engage um, the uh, community voices? How do we 
encourage uh, constituents to uh, to serve on boards, committees, and commissions. And if, in fact, that that is our goal, um, so how do we start preparing and um, and encouraging individuals to serve? And I think that having a um, a um, an alder serve in that position um, really does a detriment in um, this way. Is one if um, uh, if a resident was on a board committee or commission and an alder uh, um, was alder's name was referred, um, I, I would say that um, that resident may or may not step forward because they are going to ask why, why should I step forward because this person has more knowledge, more whatever that is. And so I think that those positions, those slots should be left open to uh, residents um, and the public to serve on. We as alders um, have a lot of weight and um, I'm not saying that, um, you know, Know, certain alders would abuse it, but but that's not the case. It should be where we are encouraging and developing the pool of residents to serve on boards, committees, and commissions, and that should not be uh, an elected official. So I will not be supporting even the alternate. Thank you, Alder McKinney. Alder Heck. Thanks, President Abbas. I'm sorry, are we discussing the uh, an amendment, the amendment. alternate, or the, the amendment? Okay. Um, could, could you explain that again? Sorry, I, I'm a little bit confused by what... Sorry, I, I also did not did a good job explaining, so <laughs> I will give another try. Thanks. So the amendment is pretty similar to Alder Bennett Amendment last time. That amendment basically allow Alder to be a chair or a co-chair in absence of committee member, if they decide not to run for the chair and vice chair position, all there is allowed. So first opportunity will be given to the community member. The second thing in this amendment is added, the alders cannot take both position of chair or co-chair. Example, like plan commission. Uh, so in, I'm just giving an example of plan commission. In case of plan commission, if alder decide to be a chair and another alder, because three of you, three alders sit on that commission and second alder decide to be a vice chair, then the alders are taking, you know, full control on the agenda item. So that amendment also only give opportunity for one alder rather than two. So it's one alder can be chair, either vice chair, and then the resident member have to be part of that leadership. So it's kind of like creating opportunity for making sure the opportunity is there for resident member. Okay, thank you. I think I understand it now. Perfect. So motion in front of us is move adoption of alternative as amended. Alder Foster. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify. So this would also include the other uh, kind of two key provisions of the alternate, which would be um, it would it would require elections of officers uh, annually, and also would allow uh, BCCs to get items on the agenda um, if um, according to the language in there. Correct. Those those elements are still there, right? Yep. Those are still there as alternate. Yep. Um, so I'll, I guess I'll just real quickly say, um, you know, I, I really appreciated the conversation last time. Um, it's clear to me that there are a number of folks that feel pretty strongly about trying to uh, sort of carve out space for resident members to serve as officers. Um, I think my preference would still be to just leave it open and leave it to the BCCs and, and not, you know, put restrictions, but I'm also um, willing to Except the uh, this amendment that's proposed, uh, I think the other two components of this proposed change, in my mind, are, are perhaps even a little bit more critical. So I I'm I would be willing to support uh, the this as amended. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Foster, Alder Vehele. Uh, you unmute it. Thank you, Chair, uh, President Abbas. So basically what we are voting on the alternate is the, the priority is given to the residents and should we have no residents 
who is interested in that leadership, then the elder can uh, take that role. Uh, and the other um, second amendment for you is there can be two elders who will be serving as chair and co-chair, correct? That's, that's correct. And Attorney Hass is also here, I believe. Attorney Hass, would you, would you like to explain that? Um, I'm sorry, explain the amendment or the... Yes, amendment. Be before, before I, uh, Attorney Hass jumps in, my, my question is, what constitutes uh, the resident not to be available? For example, if the mayor um, uh, appoints resident, will, will the committee choose the residents in the committee as a chair? Are there a timeline where if no one comes up, then we can give that position to the elders? So should there be a timeline or I, I like I like where this one is going this is going in addition to the limiting the chair to one year. But then what what's the timeline in terms of when an elder can jump in? for this leadership role, if there's any timeline. Right, so um, the language is a little bit general. I'll tell you what my understanding of it is, is that at the time of a, at the time that the election is conducted, if no resident member steps forward and, and offers to serve as chair, that's where the decision is made. Then there's an election. If there's no resident member, put forward as a candidate, then alders could run for those offices. And then if a resident member five months later says, oh, I'd like to be chair, they, they don't get to step in. The election takes place. The person is uh, chosen, is entitled to serve out their term, with the caveat being that you know a body can always choose to remove his chair, but that's kind of a separate, you'd have to first remove the chair and then elect somebody else. But absent that, I took the intent of the amendment to be, it's at the time that the election takes place that you determine whether a resident member um, is available and willing to serve um, as an officer. And if, if the intent is anything you know, different than that, we can certainly clarify, but that's the way I, I understood it. Alder Vahila, do you have further question? You're muted. Yes, I don't know if this is a question or just amending what's on, on in front of us, but what I'm thinking is perhaps give the alder the vice chair while we are finding out the chair for the community member. I don't know if that could be an amendment or that's something that we can uh, use, but giving the priority as the vice chair for the alder and then giving the, uh, the chair to the residents. So, because sometimes when the residents are appointed, it takes time to understand the committee and it's hard for them just to come up front and take that leadership role. But I think having the elder as a vice chair, that will pass time to engage the community and to be part of the, uh, the, uh, the leadership role. So I, I don't know what that language will look like, or that's an amendment, or but that's so, my comment. So, so Alder Vahili, what I'm understanding, you would like to make an amendment rather than that language about chair and vice chair. You want to make you want to make a proposal like Alder can only be seat as a vice chair, not the chair of the committee. Correct. Attorney has. Uh, uh, so we already have amendment on an alternative. Can Alder Vahili do you an amendment on 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 that? You're muted. Sorry. The way I would look at this is that that is not really an amendment to the original amendment. That's amending 
the the basic language, the original proposal. Um, and so I would recommend first voting on Alder Abbas, Abbas's amendment and then figuring out where to go from that in a, an additional amendment. Um, could be offered after that time, depending on how the vote goes. Right. If there is no further discussion or question, let's take a vote on uh, on amendment. Is there any objection for unanimous consent? Alder Mahili, you you like to do a roll call? Yes. Okay. Matlin, could you please do a roll call? Uh, President Abbas? Aye. Vice President Martin? Aye. Alder Bennett? Aye. Alder Harrington McKinney? Could you come back to me, please? Absolutely. Uh, Alder Heck? Aye. Alder Lemmer is excused. Alder Wahelier? No. And uh, back to Alder Harrington McKinney. Aye. And Madeline, you also need to ask Alder Carter because Alder Lemmer is absent, so she's a voting member there. My apologies, Alder Carter. <laughs> Alder Carter? That's okay, Madeline. Um, I... Uh, six to one, I to know uh, amending the alternative passes. So the amendment is passed. Now in front of us is uh, the alternative as amended. Alder Vahili, do you want to make a motion now? Say it again. Do you, do you wish to make a motion now? If the, the motion passed, right? So the amendment passed of alternative. Do you wish to do your motion in which you were saying? You yes. Know, so you're, you want to do a motion, correct? Yes, to have the uh, the vice chair only. Alder can only sit for a vice chair, not for the chair of the committee. Yes. Okay, so there is a motion. Alder can only sit for a vice chair, not as a chair of a committee. Is there any? Second. Second. Okay, second. second. Questions? I have a one question for attorney Hass. So attorney has uh, the motion in front of his uh, uh, chair and vice chair. What if they are co-chairs? Some committees also have co-chairs, then what? Well, I think that if, uh, I think then an alder could not serve as a co-chair. Um, they could serve as a vice chair and just looking at you know, I'm trying to look at exactly what the specific language would be. Um, um, I guess, you know, we, I have the language, I believe, of what was just passed, but I'm not sure where, if that was just to be added as a new subdivision of the ordinance um but we should we should figure out what the specific language is going to be for alder wahaley's proposal right now it says no other shall be the chair co-chair or vice chair except when it's not filled by a non-alder member of the subunit so that could just um, we need to just settle on language. I guess it should be um, no other, it could be no other shall serve as the chair of any subunit. And then we could modify this existing language to say 
No other may serve as vice chair except when the position is not filled by a non-alder member of the subunit. Alder Vihili, could you please work on an email with our attorney has? Could you please send that to Alder Vihili? Could you work while I can take comments from Alder Foster? Thank you. The language. I appreciate that. Alder Foster. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, as I mentioned last time, I'm not necessarily super enthusiastic about the, the sort of previous restriction, but I'm kind of willing to go along with it in the spirit of, of supporting, you know, residents to take these roles. Um, I, I am not, I'm, I'm less enthusiastic about adding another layer that I think all of us are trying to tease apart and understand. I anticipate this is going to cause a BCC election. You have to be explaining what can and can't happen. And at the end of the day, I actually think Alder Wahelia's um, scenario that you put out there, I, I can see that, right? Where you've got a sort of a new member to the body. They don't have enough experience in BCCs would be willing to consider kind of stepping up, but feel comfortable and like to like maybe kind of get some support. In that scenario, I actually think it would make more sense if the, if the alder were chair and this person were vice chair, so they could sort of watch and learn, fill in once or twice when they're, when they're gone. But if somebody's, you know, in that position, I don't think, I mean, they're going to, they're going to be basically the whole concept is we're forcing them to be chair, which is going to be sort of the, the part where they have to know, Robert's rules, they got to be speaking every meeting, they got to be, you know, making all the calls. And I'm just, I don't think that having an alder vice chair is going to actually be like, at least during the meetings, isn't going to be a lot of support. Well, it, I guess in my mind, if the goal is really to try and encourage and support residents to take these leadership roles, I, it almost makes more sense to go the other way and um, allow residents to be vice chairs until they get their feet on themselves and then for chair the next time so I, I i don't i don't think i support this and i think it's, if we lay too many layers on here it's just going to turn this into some nonsense and i i don't know i mean i don't, I don't think we should go this deep thank you alder foster alder vihele you're muted do you want me to come back to you you yes, come back, come back to me because what I'm trying to understand the uh, what's in front of us and what we have voted on. However, you know, it says, you know, the first priority is given to the residents as the chair, and then the that, that's my amendment. And the second uh, opportunity is given to the uh, to the uh, uh, to the older. I don't agree that the chair should be given to the alder first and then the co-chair should be given to the to the residency because it, you know we're giving and empowering the residents to to be in leadership position so i'm i'm working on the uh, on the language so hopefully i can send something to attorney has alder mckinney okay thank you very much um one of the things that um, we have, are committed to is training and development of residents so that we can expand the resident base. Um, and if that is true, um, there is no training or preparation to serve as a chair. Uh, it doesn't mean that a, even an alder would be in that position, but that's not the case. The case is, is that we, the, the case is, is that we are looking to train, develop, and expand the base of residents to serve on boards, committees, and commissions. That's what we need. I mean, the, you know, the alders carry a lot of weight already. And what I'm supporting is, is that, and I, I like the tweaking of the amendment in terms of the position of chair um, is uh, relegated to um, uh, residents only, and the vice chair can be, um, uh, and and I'm going to uh, adjust that, the vice chair could serve, um, the, the alder could serve as vice chair. Um, that's an amendment I'm friendly and I would go with it, but I just want to say, and let's be very clear, is, is that if we are hiring um, and we are talking about building 
community engagement, we have to put our money where we have to we have to be consistent with that. The training, development and expanding uh, the capacity of residents to serve in those positions is something that we're committed to. Do we have that yet? No. Do we need to put that in place? Yes. But when we're looking at an ordinance, an ordinance is firm. I mean, it's it, once we put that into place, that is firm, that's commitment, and that's what we have to do. So I would like to, to have that consideration that the position as chair of any board committee or commission be relegated or, or for, um, for a resident. No alder should serve in that position, but it does leave the position open as vice chair. I, I, and I'm hoping that that language is um, very clear. I'm not um, comfortable with all the other languages that if uh, if there no one steps up and that's just I don't think that I think that that's confusing. That's a layer that does not need to be there. It should be very clear, very succinct, and that added layer of if no resident steps up, then that's just added conversation. And I don't think that that's, that needs to be in there. Thank you, Alder McKinney. I will also just remind the committee we have really packed agenda and we have one hour left. Alder Carter, please go ahead. Um, oh, thank you. I was just going to say that the truth of the matter is not every Alder knows Robert's rules or how to conduct a meeting. Uh, this is where training comes in. And therefore, uh, we can't say that a resident doesn't know it when most of us don't know it. Training has to be part of this. And I do think we need to empower our residents to be chairs and to provide, and to provide them with the training that's necessary if they don't have it already. Thank you. I really appreciate short comment, uh, Alder Carter. With that, Alder Vahili, uh, is your motion is in order? Do you have the language in front of you? You're muted. Yes, at, I think attorney has sent me a uh, modified one, but it doesn't still, uh, it doesn't still says what I want to say. But basically, I don't know what the language, but basically what I'm saying is in the event of no resident, uh, you know, the, the only position that older, alders can take part in the BCC is vice chair. I don't know which language I can, I can do that. That, that's my intent. Bernie has. could you please help us here? Sure. Yeah, that's the only intent is no alders should be chair or co-chair. The only time that they can be in a leadership role is vice chair. And, that's my intent. And is that, is there the restriction of that can only take place if a non-alder is not available? Yes. Okay. So I think what I said would work. So I, I just propose adding at the beginning of the amendment that was passed a sentence that says no other person shall be the chairperson or co-chairperson of any subunit. And then in the next sentence, just striking chairperson and co-chairperson. So it says no other person shall be vice chairperson of any subunit, um, except where the office is not filled by a non-older member of the subunit, and then striking the next sentence that says that alders cannot serve as chair or vice and vice chair at the same time, because that would not be a possibility. Okay, that should be fine. Can you send that language to all? Can you send that language to all? Uh, I'm saying Alder Metlin. <laughs> can you send this to Metlin, please, so she okay. can forward to all of us, including Alder Foster, please. Adeline, could you send it to my personal email because I'm locked out right now? And, and, and just so the committee knows, uh, I I cannot get the strike through to work on my email, so the the language that would be struck is highlighted, 
And then there's underlying language that I've added. Madeline, did you get? Yes, I've gotten your email. I'm going to be forwarding it to the Alders. Um, Alder Bennett, if you could send me your personal email um, so I can forward it to you as well, that would be wonderful. Uh, where can I send it? Sorry. Madeline, I can send it to you. Thank you, Stefan. Alder Carter, do you have any? Our attorney has to go ahead. I was just going to suggest that, uh, you know, maybe we should also specify that this would be in 33.017D. It would just be a new, we'd be putting that language that was struck back in the ordinance, but as 7D instead of 7B. You know, part of me really think we should refer it again. And Alders can work with Alder Foster and Tony Hess and come back rather than we do on a fly. But if if the will of the committee feel like we can do right now, then we should just do it right now. I call for the vote. So, Matlin, quick question. I'm having a hard time to track where we are. So we passed the amendment on alternative. Did Alder Vahila did motion and there was a second? Yes, I believe the second was from Alder Harrington McKinney. McKinney. Okay, and the language is in front of us and call. Let's do a roll call vote then. Okay. Uh, President Abbas? Aye. Vice President Martin? I'm sorry. I hate to do this. We are voting on the 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 resolution as amended. Correct. Amended by Alder Vahili. Okay. Okay. Um, this is only on Alder Vahili's. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. No. Alder Bennett. Um, can you come back? I just need time to read it. Absolutely. Uh, Alder Harrington McKinney. Aye. Alder Heck? No. Alder Lummer is excused. Alder Wahelia? Aye. Alder Carter? I'm sorry. Um, I had to step away. Can you tell me where we're at? We are um, voting on Alder Wahelia's um, amendment. Aye. And uh, back to you, Alder Bennett. No. And Madeline, can you also do my vote change to no as well, please? Absolutely. Um, then a vote along the lines of four to three, uh, the no's have it. Alder Wahelia's amendment does not pass. All right. We will back to the main motion as alternative, amended as alternative. Uh, is there any objection to call? Perhaps there is objection. So let's do a roll call vote again. So motion in front of us is move approval of alternative version two as amended by uh, Alder Abbas. Attorney Hess. And again, can we just clarify that that additional language would be Included as 7D in the yeah, ordinance. Yes. Okay. Alder McKinney. Uh, would you please ask, I mean, uh, ask um, old, um, Attorney Haas to read what's before us? Attorney Haas, could you please do that? Well, uh, the entire ordinance. I mean, we we. This is all their fosters. No, j just the part that where um, uh, President Abbas is made. Right. Yeah. Sure. 
Um, so this is what's already been incorporated into the resolute into the ordinance. Uh, no alder shall be the chair, co-chair, or vice chair of any subunit authorized to have more than two resident members appointed by the mayor and confirmed by the council, except where an office is not filled by a non-alder member of the subunit. In no event shall alders serve as both chair and vice chair at the same of the same subunit at the same time. Uh, then we have the other language, existing language. Um, uh, in, in the event the resident chair and vice chair are absent from a meeting and alder upon consensus of the members present, May assume the chair, however, in no event shall an alder serve as chair of any such subunit for more than two consecutive meetings. Alder Foster. Yeah, I get just that last sentence that you said, I think it's from that original language and it seems to potentially conflict. So it probably needs to be further clarified to say in the circumstance that they're filling in temporarily, they can't do it for more than two, right? Because it says I, in the circumstance. I think maybe we just say, however, in that in that case, um, <laughs> no, in that case, no alders shall serve as chair of any such subunit for more than two consecutive meetings just strike it all together because if that is happening it's because somebody doesn't isn't stepping up which is essentially what is being allowed right so i i don't know you got to figure it out i mean it is a good point that was in the existing ordinance um you know we brought back different language that was focused on serving as permanent chair not serving in a temporary capacity i i I think so. We should strike that down. It's, it doesn't make sense a lot. That language there create more confusion. To be honest, just reading. So, so attorney you, has so now to strike that language down. Do we need to do another amendment? I, th I think you do need an amendment. Okay, I would like to move an amendment to strike down the language. However, in no event shall an alder serve as a chair or any subcommittee for more than two consecutive meetings. Second. Moved and seconded. Let's go. Any question for attorney Hess? All right, let's go with all the way here, go ahead. So the original language was not to uh, serve uh, as a chair, not more than two consecutive um, meetings right but now we are allowing them to be chair however they want is that correct attorney has oh if there's no if there's, there's no, no limitation if there's no resident member then an alder can serve as chair and then also if there is a resident member and a resident i mean a resident chair and a resident vice chair but they are absent then alders could serve as chair and there would not be a limit on how many meetings they could do that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Alder Vahele, thank you. Uh, Madeline, can we please do a roll call? Um, President Abbas? Aye. Vice President Martin? No. Alder Bennett? I'm I'm so sorry. I keep getting myself confused today. So so we're 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 voting on the passing this or I'm I'm sorry. What are we voting on? Attorney Hess. This is only on the amendment to strike the language, however, in no event shall an alder serve as chair of any such 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 subunit for more than two consecutive meetings. Okay, can you just come back to me? Absolutely. Um, Alder Harrington McKinney? No. Alder Heck? Aye. Alder Lemmer is excused. Alder Wahelier?
Hello, Vahili, you will mute it. Please go ahead. Yeah, I. Hi. Hi. All right. Alder Carter. Can you come back to me? Yep, for sure. Um, back to you, Alder Bennett. Okay. So this is to vote on whether an alder can serve for two consecutive meetings. Is this striking the original language that we were just talking about? No, it's just striking the language of however. However, in no event shall an alder serve as a chair of any such subunit for more than two consecutive meetings. That's the only language we are taking out. And the reason is in case if the chair and vice chair is not there for two or three meetings, it doesn't make sense to strike alder down. They can be chair until then they come back. Correct, Alder, uh, Alder has, sorry, attorney has. <laughs> That's correct. Okay, um, well, um, based on that, Alder has, um, I guess. <laughs> um, I, I, um, yes? Or wait, yes. Recorded as an I? Okay. Alder Bennett, aye. Um, back to you, Alder Carter. Aye. I would also like to change mine. This is Alder Martin. I'd like to change my vote to an aye as well. I got to look at it more. Thank you. Okay. On a vote of six to one, eyes to nose, um, this amendment to strike the language passes. Yes. All right. Now there is a motion in front of us, a pass alternative version two as amended. Matlin, can you do a roll call? Alder Vahele, do you have uh, any comments? Your hand is raised. Okay. Now we are on, everybody, just to be clear, we are on a main motion as amended. Matlin, go ahead. Okay. Uh, President Abbas? Aye. Uh, Vice President Martin? Aye. Uh, Alder Bennett? Yes. Alder Harrington McKinney? No. Alder Heck? Aye. Alder Lemmer is excused. Alder Wahelier? Aye. And Alder Carter? You are muted. One more time, Alder Carter, you're muted. Aye. Uh, a vote of six to one. Um, approval of alternative two as amended uh, passes. Thank you, motion pass. We will move to next agenda item number three, legislative file number 67373, repeal section. 33.53 of Medicine General Ordinance to eliminate the Digital Technology Committee. Can I please have a motion? Um, move recommending, uh, is it is it disbandment um, or uh, adoption? Closing? Yes. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah. Second, Alder Vahil, move motion seconded. Uh, Alder Foster, would you like to speak to that? Oh, sorry, not fast. I'll defer me. My mistake. <laughs> Thank you, Council President. Um, this is a committee that I was very excited about uh, when I uh, became an alder. And unfortunately, um, it's a committee that has, uh, th throughout the time I've been alder, has struggled to find a purpose, has struggled to have quorum, and now it's struggled to actually have members. 
Um, we have multiple members that um, uh, were part of it and uh, did not did not wish to be, uh, their terms expired, did not wish to be reappointed. Um, we've had members that are currently on it that have resigned. Um, the committee's uh, primary focus has, has tried to be on uh, digital uh, uh, equity and digital inclusion, um, but quite frankly, there's just no work for this particular committee to be working on. So um, in its um, current um, structure, on its current definition, it's just a committee that's uh, unfortunately not very useful. Um, and so I've put this forward. Um, when we're looking at redoing committees, it's my hope that we can figure out some place um, for uh, digital technology to exist, because I do think this serves an important purpose. Um, I think there are a lot of things that go on in the city that, that uh, related to digital technology um, and city services, et cetera, that a committee could focus on. Um, but just in its current state, it, it doesn't make sense for this committee to exist. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions, um, but that's why I put this forward. Thank you. Thank you. All the way here, like. Question for the staff. Who, who, who's in the staff can ask question? I don't think so. Anybody from IT is here, uh, but go ahead, ask question. Let's see if uh, all of her men or somebody else could help us. Go ahead. Yes, so my, my question is, uh, what was the intent of the commission or committee and why there's lack of uh, engagement or participation uh, without, uh, you know, having, without knowing the, the root causes of why there's no engagement in the committee. I, I don't think it's, it's, uh, it's, it's wise to just to dissolve the committee. We are working in uh, streamlining the BCC. Uh, at some uh, some point in the future from TFAG as well as the uh, President Work Group for Social Justice, Equity and Anti-Racism. This could be a place that we can be able to look into in the long run to see which committees, commission or board are not really functioning well and that will be a, a place that we can talk about more. Thank you. Thanks, Alder Vahili. Uh I will also say a few things too as well. Uh, so we have similar situation with city county homeless committee and the CCC decided, if we all remember earlier this year and during time of Alder Carter, to look into in case of it's get dissolved, who's gonna take in charge and how the issue's gonna be addressed. I think so with this also similar, uh, perhaps Alder Furman can help issues related to digital technology or literacy or problem with equity, especially related to internet. I don't know what else scope of this committee is, who could really answer that. I'm just curious to hear if all of them, and if you wish to give an answer, we appreciate that. Sure. I mean, I could add some some additional information. I mean, so the, the ordinance has, uh, if you look at the uh, this repeal, um, it, it has a copy of what's in the ordinance, and like every committee definition, um, there's duties. And so, if you look at um, you know three three dot five three four, um, that the duties of the com the committee is defined there um, with what it what 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 it's been tasked with. Um, I will be quite honest, there are people that read this in many different ways. Um, the way that this particular definition was set up, um, it doesn't have a lot of clarity in my opinion. It says a lot of words, um, but ultimately has been focused um, and, and, and IT's um, charge uh, in staffing it has been focused on digital equity. I think there are other committees that exist that could focus on this this better. Um, I will say right now there's only two members of this committee. Um, every other member has expired and um, and one member, uh, which is the chair, has resigned. And so the two members of this committee are myself and one resident member. If you look at the definition of the committee, um, it's supposed to have nine members. Um, so it's it's completely been, I mean, it, you know, so if, if, if CC CEC decides to recommend not to dissolve this. It doesn't matter. This committee doesn't exist. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, you know, I recognize that there's going to be a process to look at this more. I think a comparison to city county committee is is unfair because the city county committee has a lot of connections based on the lease agreement that it comes with the city. And when that came in front of CCEC, um, it was pretty clear that the lease was not resolved on how to figure out how any of those issues would be resolved um, if if that committee didn't exist. Um, so I don't think it's a necessarily a fair comparison. Uh, I'll, I'll be quite honest that this committee again decides not to not to dissolve this i don't think it matters much this committee you know functionally doesn't exist thank you all right thank you alder Furman. my intent was not to compare 
Uh, it was just a policy decision for us as a CCC to decide how we have to deal with overall committees of City of Madison, whether city county or this committee or future committees, when it comes to us, we have to make a policy decision uh, how we proceed. Either we dissolve it or do we need to find a mechanism to address. So just for clarity point of view, it was not a apple to oranges comparison. Uh, any further discussion? Alder Carter, you're muted. Was anyone from IT on this committee? No, IT, IT staffed this committee, but they were not okay. on this committee. But that we had several members from the IT department, three actually. It would be uh, Sarah Edgerton, Amanda, and um, I can't remember. Why can I not remember um, uh, the other gentleman's name? But, but it was certainly had plenty of representation by the IT department there. Okay, thank you. All right, so the motion of us is to repeal this uh, committee and there's a second. Any objection to record unanimous vote? All right, I don't see any hand raised, so it is motion is approved. We will move forward to next agenda item, agenda item number four, legislative file number 67573, substitute amending section 2.014 and 33.011B of the Medicine General Ordinances to clarify prohibited meeting dates. Can I please have a motion? Move recommendation to um, adopt. Can I have a second? Second. It's moved and seconded. Any questions for the staff or comment? Alder Furman, go ahead. Thank you, Council President. I am, I am incredibly grateful uh, for this um, uh, update of, of this ordinance. Um, uh, so, so thank you for those who worked on it. Um, wanted to at least put this point out for uh, members of this committee to, to consider um, both uh, the Rosh Hashanah holiday as well as Yom Kippur. Both those holidays start the night, the evening before. And so if, if one were to be uh, knowledgeable of those holidays, they know that. Um, but I do see that this ordinance now does call out the idea of saying the evening before um, the, the new holiday that's being added. And, and so I'm just wondering if there is value in adding that freeze um, of the evening before. Um, so it's, it's clearer in ordinance form and written form that that is what the case is. Again, the definition of Yom Kippur is, is, does include the evening before, but I'm not sure how clear that would be to people. So that would just be my, my suggestion for consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Furman. Is there any objection to add that language in the ordinance? Attorney has, do we need to do motion to add that language? Yes, we do. All right, I, I just saw how the foster head. <laughs> All right, uh, so we will do that motion. Go ahead, I'll, Vice President Martin, do a motion. So oh, I was going. I was going to move that we include language on this, um, as Alder Furman stated, to note that the holidays of um, what is it, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are uh, start the night before, and we should take that into consideration during our meetings. So that's my motion. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Alder Furman. Let's okay. move and second it, Alder Carter. You're muted. Thank you. I, I was just wondering, I had it up and then I lost it. Um, well, let me just put it out there. We are, we're also adding two additional holidays onto this. And I'm just, um, maybe Alder Rahila can answer that. Does that need to be the evening before too? Yes. Okay, thank you. Attorney Hess. Uh, well, as written, it, it only says the evening before and the day of the first holiday. Although Haley can correct my pronunciation, but Eid al Fitr. Eid al Fitr and Eid al Adha. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The second oh. one, it does not specify the evening before. Should be there too. Okay. 
All right. Attorney Hass, do you mind uh, working with Matlin and add that language as substitute so she can add uh, in the registrar? Yep. With that understanding of evening before, uh, could we have, uh, I will consider as unanimous approval unless there is an objection. I don't see any hand raised, so the motion is approved. Uh, now we are back on substitute version two as amended on a main motion. Is there any objection to record unanimous vote? I don't see any hand raised, so I will record as unanimous vote. Thank you very much. We move forward to agenda item number five, legislative file number 67637, amending section 2.05, uh, A1, 2.05, B1, 2.05, B6, and 33.0111A, remembering 2.24, 2.05, and repeating 2.05, 2.05, and 2225 of the Medicine General Ordinance to clarify the process for introduction and referral. Can I please have a motion? I uh, move recommending to approve. Is there a second? Second. It's moved and seconded. Attorney has your hand is raised. Sorry about that. No worries. All right. Any questions or comments? I do not see any hand raised. I will just say as a as a order and as a chair, I really appreciate Aldo Foster for working on this and bringing forward in front of CCC. This looks pretty good to me. So I really appreciate the effort, especially streamlining our referral process. Uh, so I appreciate that. Alder Vahili, your hand was raised. No. All right. If there is no objection, can I record as unanimous vote? All right. I don't see any hand raised. So this is recorded as unanimous. All right, moving to agenda item number six, legislative file number 67638, amending section 2.302 of Medicine General Ordinance to change the time limit for a speaker at a public meeting. We have one registrant to speak on that meeting. Okay, I lost the file. Here we go. Emily married Creekwood Lane, Madison, Wisconsin in opposition and wish to speak. It looks like no one by that name is with us tonight. All right, she's not, that person is not here. Yep. Can we please have a motion? Move recommending approval. Motion is moved. Can I have a second, second? to approve? Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Question or comments? I do not see any hand raise. With that, I will consider as unanimous approval unless I see any hand raised. I don't see any hand raised, so it's approved. We will move to the next agenda item, agenda item number seven, legislative file number 67690, adopting APM. 2-53 COVID-19 vaccination testing policy to apply to all orders. Can I have a motion, please? Move recommendation to adopt. Motion. Second to adopt. Moved and seconded. Any questions, comments? Alder Foss, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I guess first I'll just say I, I, I agree with and appreciate the concept of requiring this of, of Alders as we do of employees. I guess my question is maybe for attorney Haas. Um, this seems to kind of touch on a, a previous discussion we had at council around APMs and their applicability. I think I understand the resolution saying, you know, it, it sort of adopts the, the content of. When I go to the to the APM, however, there's a number of references. I mean, obviously it's, it's saying employees, so we can just assume it's, you know, it means Alder instead. There's different places. Um, I mean, like the deadline section obviously is referencing October 1st. So theoretically, when we adopt it, we're like not in compliance or like you know, how, what is this, the startup time for alders um, to have accomplished? Um, seems like we should maybe set a, an actual deadline. Um, there's like references to supervisors. Uh, I think one section says 
you have to get past results to your media supervisor or the agency designated contact. So I'm sure we could, you know, just choose somebody in the council office as a designated contact, which we should probably do. But then um, in other sections, it only references like the, the positive results. Um, so it has to go to their supervisor. Uh, I think all these things are like things that we can get over, but then, and then later on, it's talking about like the city will review things and human resources and any of these kind of exemption sort of things. And then like ultimately it gets to the point where if there are issues that could result in disciplinary action, including separation and the HR director is the one that interprets the policy. So it just like, there's so much stuff that seems to like not quite fit. And I'm wondering if we couldn't, shouldn't do a different kind of resolution that says this is our expectation, but that is kind of deals with the reality of the fact that we're workers and I don't think we can really get fired for getting a vaccine. Um, so I guess any, any thoughts you have on that? Yeah, I think those are good points. I think there's a couple of options. Um, first of all, as far as an effective date, you know, this would not, this would go into effect sometime Next week, if the council passes it and after the council proceedings are approved, um, it, it, it may be that, you know, one way to approach it is for the council to direct staff to tailor this APM to the council to clean up those issues. If you wanted it to come back and maybe have a cleaner policy you could look at, or if you just want to, you know, pass this one and leave it up to the staff to to administer it, because you're right, there are provisions that just will not apply to to alders as they are written. Yeah, thank you for for that. And I, I mean, I'll, I'll leave you all to the, kind of discuss it and think what you want to do. Um, again, I'm 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 on board with the concept, and I think it's it's good. We should sort of set that expectation for ourselves. I think probably that last point is the one that's the most sort of troubling. And I mean, I think we either need to like, is there going to be a review process if somebody is refusing, or are we just going to say you're, we're disappointed in you and public chastisement or, I mean, I think at least that we should probably just like figure out what our, what our goal is, or I don't know. I, I think it would be worth cleaning it up a little bit at least. Uh, Cause it just, I think there's enough, enough elements that just don't quite fit. It, I think it'd be better if we if we tweaked it a little bit to ourselves. Thanks. Thanks, Alder Foster. Alder Carter. Yes, I, I after I read it, I was going to uh, recommend that we do something separate for the council office and directly address uh, the alders in this situation. I, again, I uh, definitely support um, the concept of this, as Alder Foster said earlier, um, we all have uh, senior people in our families that we have to protect, and some of us have small children, and other of us might have friends and relatives that have health conditions. And, and in addition to that, we want to protect each other. So I would like to see um, the attorney's office to draft something that's more in line and with the council office versus just adding um, the APM to us. Thank you. Thank you. Alder Fermi. Uh, thank you, Council President. I'll um, just, just uh, start by echoing uh, uh, both Alder Carter and Alder Foster, um, but also ask a, a question of Attorney Haas. Is there any ability for us to, to, to maybe make this a little bit more um, enforceable and in maybe denying access to the building to unvaccinated alders? Um, because obviously there is no disciplinary action that can be taken against an alder who, who decides not to uh, follow this procedure. Um, and when I echo uh, uh, Alder Carter and, and Alder Foster, I'm fully vaccinated and, and support vaccination mandates. Um, but you know, to, to make this a little bit stronger, is there any ability to say you know you can't come into you know uh, a, a meeting or, or or city building without following some sort of policy like this? Well, uh, two things. I think I don't I don't know that that's something that public health would really support, and it's not even the case. For employees, employees, um, if they are not vaccinated, they go through testing on a weekly basis under this APM. So as long as they have have uh, negative tests, 
they would still be able to come to come to work. Sure, sure, but could that then be focused on the idea that if an alder decides not to get vaccinated and also not to get tested, therefore violating, you know, a big chunk of what this APM says, could could there then be a denial of allowing uh, that individual um, to you know, come into you know a public a public space um, and and endanger the lives of others? If they don't do either one, you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's kind of crossing over into public health territory that I'm not qualified to comment on whether or not that, I mean, could you make that a rule? Legally, I'm not sure if you can, you know, bar an alder from a public building for that. I think at the very least, you'd probably have to have some public health justification for that. And I'm just not sure what public health would say about that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alder uh, Furman. Alder Heck. President Abbas, I'd like to make a substitute motion when it's appropriate. Please go ahead. I'd, I'd like to uh, move that we refer to this to the next uh, CCEC meeting so that sponsors can work on some of the issues we've addressed. Or, I will second. Uh, at least. <clears throat> Motion is moved and seconded. Alder Foster, go ahead. Uh, just one thought as folks are working on that, um, uh, in channeling some of what I think we, we learned when we were talking about APM applicability, um, perhaps the, the, the biggest or the best and the safest consequence is sort of being public about the fact that an alder is refusing to do it. I mean, obviously, we're not going to disclose like medical information, but I think if if an alder fails to to do this and refuses to do you know do one of the other pathways, you know perhaps in the past I think what we kind of landed on in terms of discipline is the the voters are the boss and so making sure that there's that there's information out there so maybe just something for the sponsors to consider when you're thinking about what that um, you know what what the stick is at the end of it. Thanks, Alder McKinney. Um. I am not supporting shaming anyone. I mean, if there's some checks and balances that the um, authors can put in place, then um, then yes, do that. But publicly shaming someone, I will never support that. And um, that's not where we want to land. That's not where I want to land. Thanks, Alder McKinney. Alder Bennett. Yeah, I'll just second what Alder McKinney just said. Just because, I don't know, I I mean, I could imagine a situation where an alder, or or not even just an alder, but I'm, I'm certain there are situations where people who want to get vaccinated can't just because of medical concerns. Um, so I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if there are any alders or any people in in the city that uh fall under that fall into that situation um but i don't know i think the public would take care of it itself and we don't need to like help them out in <laughs> with that thanks alder bennett alder foster yeah, just real quickly, I want to clarify that this the policy lays out a suite of alternatives that you can get vaccinated or you can get tested and you have these different things. What I was stating, and, and in that policy, an ultimate consequence could be getting fired from your job. And what my point is that we we can't do that with elders, which is part of what needs to get resolved. And so to adopt a policy that has no consequence at the end, at the end also doesn't make a ton of sense to me. So I think if if the goal, I guess what I what I was suggesting is having that information public that an alder refuses to follow an adopted policy that we pass does seem like one potential consequence. But I'll I'll leave that up to the sponsors to consider. Thank you, Alder Foster. Uh, we'll we will staff and the sponsor, including myself, we will work on that and also include public health in that discussion. I think so there's quite a bit of area of public health and we will bring it back to CCEC, but it's good to know a broader support for that APM. Any further discussion on a referral motion? I do not see any hand raised, so I will consider as unanimous approval. 
unless I see any objection. I don't see. Perfect. With that, can I have a all recorder? Go ahead. You're muted. I thought there was a substitute from attorney up uh, from sorry, a alder hack. I upgraded you to attorney hack. Uh, um, I thought he did a substitute before the amendment. You are correct. Alder hack said substitute to refer, but I I believe he meant to say he want to refer this to next CCEC, correct? Okay, that's fine. Yes, that's Thank you. It's one of those nights. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I appreciate that. Can I have a motion to adjourn, please? Move adjournment. Can we have a second? Second. second. Perfect. Move and seconded. The meeting is adjourned. See you guys soon at 6 30. Bye.